Assalamu alaikum students, your instructor Abdul Rafi here for A-level accounting and mathematics at Excel Pearson board. So today we are going to start the chapter of our statistics 2 of 9709 A-level mathematics and we are starting with the chapter students of continuous random variable CRV. This is chapter number three. Already make sure you know about the linear combinations of random variable chapter. Also the Poisson distribution is done. Okay. So before starting this chapter, it is very simple, easy chapter. The main thing will be you should know the differentiation. Okay, you should know all types of differentiation. The main tip in this is integration that you should be knowing integration of P1 and P3 as well. Okay, you should know both integration like you should know differentiation of trigonometric functions, exponential and every implicit parametric by parts every uh, you should know every integration there okay students so this is very important tip here sorry not not implicit and parametric these those are differentiation you should only know about all types of integration from the p1 and p3 9709 a level mathematics coming back to this understanding what is continuous random variable that's going to be our first understanding in the lecture number one first concept will be what is actually the continuous random variable just like we have discrete random variable in the statistics one okay s19709 there was discrete random variable where we have some x values right let me make a box everyone will get it there was this box and you have the discrete random variable that what values can x take x can one two three four and the probabilities from them okay right one x can take zero one two and three values and the probability of x was given 2 over 5 and 2 over 5 and let's say 1 over 5 so this is this was the discrete random variable let me write down this is this was drv discrete random variable continuous random variable is basically the continuous range that we are going to take in discrete data as we have talked about that discrete is basically integer values taking number of eggs number of horses number of uh, watches number of phones number of pencils, number of cars, but continuous random variable can take any measurements, right? It can take heights, it can take weights, okay? The heights of the plants, the weight of the, the weight of the toys, anything, any, any data that can be in decimals is called continuous, right? Any data, height, weight, and these things. So these are the measurements such as time, mass, or length as well. Continuous variables, we say that continuous variables are associated with the measurements of characteristics such as time mass or length okay so continuous variables are associated with the time mass or length so first thing should be very clear that continuous data is for the length and time and those things students the next thing you should be good about it the again random variable will be x okay as we have discussed so now how do you how do you solve questions in this chapter so first thing will be you will be given a probability density function okay in this chapter you will be given a probability density function and let me explain you with the diagram and the graph that i have drawn and the function what is actually a probability density function so a probability density function is basically defining the continuous random variable a continuous random variable can be defined by the probability density function and we have been seeing in the graph so this fx here students this fx is the function this fx is the probability density functions and let me give you an idea in all the past papers as well here you go the probability density function fx is given the function is given let me know let me explain you how do you read the data the probability density function is given the function is always going to be given that is basically the probability density function students and this is the function sir okay follow in the color this is the function half plus one over three x and the x values domain will be given to you so the function is basically valid for the given interval okay very important the function is valid the continuous random variable it is valid for the interval between one and two inclusive or you can say between a and b the function that is half plus one over three x that is the probability density function students it is valid for a given interval that is between one and two both of them are inclusive and the other thing that is important and to understand in this type of questions is zero otherwise so which means what does this mean that zero otherwise let me explain you from the diagram perspective okay students 
Students should understand that this is the function half plus 1 over 3x. This blue line that I have drawn, this is the equation half plus 1 over 3x. So if you see carefully for 1 to 2, okay, for 1 to 2, the density function exists for between 1 and 2 inclusive between this interval, the probability density function exists. Students, this highlighted part I have shown and otherwise 0 means okay, before 1, and after 2 the probability becomes 0. I'll repeat it again students after 2 because it's a probability density function probability function after 2 that's why I have shaded in the that's why I have made the line in the red color that before 1 and after 2 sir the probability is becoming 0 and that is what we are saying that if the probability becomes 0 it's very simple that's why it's written 0 otherwise. Now, a couple of more understanding important things. You will have to integrate to find the to find the probability. Okay, for any probability, you have to find between them between one and two. You will have to integrate. The important thing is, as we already know from the S1, the basic concepts. Okay, students, that total probability is always one. Okay, so total probability students is always going to be one total probability is always going to be 1 so you can say that area under the graph is also 1 okay area under the graph will always be equals to 1 for the given interval for any given interval whatever the interval is given students let's say between a and b that will be the total probability and area under the graph will be 1 and the fx graph cannot be negative since probability cannot be negative so you cannot draw the graph like this or this because probability so another important point is that the graph of the y is equals to fx will never go below the x-axis as well okay another important point the graph of the fx okay any question you take in this chapter the graph of fx will be will not be negative because probability cannot be negative okay because probability we know it's a positive from 0 to 1 the maximum is 1 so probability because probability cannot be negative that is the reason okay I'm, read, I'm giving all explanation for the first lecture so students get a complete idea let's let me show you more examples so students get a better idea as well here you go this function the probability density function is given 0 otherwise so which means that from minus a to a range these are the interval from minus a to a the probability between them will be one okay let's discuss another question yeah let's discuss this one here we go the random variable x has the probability density function the function is given to us the, the intervals are given one to two and more than two and less than one the probability will become zero otherwise okay students let's discuss some diagram questions see here this is black bold in less than less than zero and more than a the probability becomes zero the function is this the black line the function is this okay let's look at another couple of diagram questions as well students here we go the first question as well the rate that intervals are given from 0 to 3 so this is basically follow carefully between 0 between 0 and 3 you will get the probability total area under the graph area under the graph or the total probability between 0 and 3 will be 1 and it will be 0 otherwise more than 3 0 less than 0 is 0 the probability 0 so that's how you read the data that's how you read the data that's how you understand how to what is the introduction to continuous random variable students hope everyone gets this in this in this uh, chapter you have to do integration every time for solving the question you will have to do a couple of things most of the things i'm mentioning here just to give you an overview that you will have to find the median and the quartiles as well you will have to find the median upper quartile lower quartiles in this chapter you will also have to find the mean and variance which means you can also find standard deviation if you get the variance as well basic concept so mean and variance that you also have to find and you can find probability of any value that is under the graph as well students okay so median quartiles mean variance you have to find but make sure everything you have to find is by when you do integration okay that's the key concept here so just just stay focused i am going to solve all the concepts and introduce questions as well topical past papers through we are going to work that out students